Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Aw, oh, this is super wholesome. Don't beat yourself up over it, OP. Mistakes happen. You handled it really well. And it looks like she did, too. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned-on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Here we go. It wasn't Karen. It was me. Hey, just a little background. I conked my head pretty hard on an F-18 fighter jet back in the Navy. I currently have some mild memory problems and kind of go into phases where I'm awake, but I can't really tell what I'm doing. It's an odd sensation when I'm tired or didn't eat well. I just go into this phase where I'm physically competent. I could juggle knives and tightrope, but not tell you how many fingers you're holding up or repeat your name when you tell me to my face. All this being said, it wasn't nearly that bad, which makes me feel terrible. You see, I'm six foot seven inches tall. I wear my hair very short, so the massive jagged scar on my head is very visible. Until people hear me talk, they usually shuffle away from me and hold their purses, children, or whatever closer and try to stand near someone else. It's a little offensive, but I can't blame them. Books and covers and all. But I do look like a bad guy. Now, the story's simple. I was running out of food in my fridge and I just got off of a 12-hour shift. I didn't need much, it might sound gross, but a super easy fast food is hummus and hot dogs. If you get the higher quality hot dogs, slather on some hummus and a line of mustard, it's great, but still clearly bachelor food. So I go to this place that sells bulk food, mostly for mom and pop restaurants or big church events, that kind of stuff. I go there because you can get these great hot dog buns, three bucks for a 24 pack. Then you can get like half a gallon of really good hummus for 15 bucks, it's great. But I almost instantly made a horrible mistake. I came in and just 20 feet in and to the left is the breads and buns. I come in and notice a woman, it's been a long day and I'm very hungry so I only vaguely notice she's wearing mild business attire just like the employees and some sort of blue apron, just like the employees. And to top it all off, she's in front of the hot dog buns, shuffling buns off of her cart and onto the shelf. I walk up and grab the last bag of hot dog buns on her cart and loudly, playfully announce, yoink. She turns around and stares at me as if I stole her purse. Something triggers inside me and I know something's wrong. I'm still trying to keep up my happy tone despite how tired I am and it takes me a full five seconds of this poor woman staring at me worried and almost shivering when I finally notice her cart has eggs, milk, frozen items, energy drinks, and a few other various items in smaller amounts, and her purse is on the cart, and the apron is actually a blue stripe on her shirt. I nearly break down apologizing, carefully placing her hot dog buns on the cart, and keep apologizing. Thankfully, she either was nice or realized how upset I had made myself with this mistake, and finally has to all but grab either side of my face and say it was fine right into my eyes. I still felt horrible. I'm huge and have to be so damned careful not to hurt people just going about my daily life, and I hate scaring the hell out of innocent people. I can be mean when I need to, but I really hate being the bad guy. I got my buns and my hummus still looking down and barely even paying attention to the world around me, letting the embarrassment and pain grind away at me when all of a sudden I hear a playful voice say, yoink, and suddenly my hummus is gone. I look over to see the woman smiling and laughing before she hands it back to me. Don't tear yourself up. It was an honest mistake and you handled it really well. I still tear myself up about it, but it was a big step on the path of feeling better. Remember, it's how someone reacts when told or realizing they made a mistake that defines the tone of the story. You were nice and apologetic about the mistake, so you're a good guy. Someone who screams and yells that another must be an employee despite evidence to the contrary is the bad guy, Karen. And our second story. Moral of the story, don't mess with the only person who knows payroll. I, 29-year-old male, am a staff accountant having worked at the same CPA, Certified Public Accountant Firm, for nine years. I've had several co-workers over the years, and by this point, I'm the most senior aside from the CPA who owns the firm. I love my boss. He pays well, no dress code, doesn't clock watch, and doesn't micromanage. 
I produce great work for him, and he leaves me alone. It could not be more perfect. A little about my responsibilities. I do payroll for about eight clients as well as ours. This is important. Books for about 12 others, preparation of the books for tax returns, as well as work on partnership and corporation returns. I'm basically the business package, really. Of the five staff accountants my boss employs, I'm the only one who knows payroll. My boss doesn't know how to do payroll, which is not uncommon, quite a few CPAs out there who don't know it, and my coworkers have no interest in learning it. I don't blame them, because I often bitch and moan because my clients are really bad about sending correct hours the first time around, resulting in having to redo everything from the pay stubs to payroll taxes. It's awful sometimes, but it's also job security. We recently merged with another CPA firm. My boss ensured that we still only report to him as it's an equal partnership. I don't quite know the workings, and frankly, I don't care, as long as I only report to my same boss. So our office went from seven people, one CPA, five staff accountants, and a receptionist, to 18 people, two managing CPAs, three people who freshly got their CPA, 11 staff accountants, and two receptionists. The other CPA firm was using ADP, third-party payroll service, for their payroll because it was just not a thing anyone knew there. So my boss asked me if I was fine taking on additional employees and hours, which I told him I was since we get paid monthly. The managing CPAs will be managers from here on out. The other CPA firm we merged with made it pretty clear on that they didn't like it. I presume it's because their boss was a complete tight butt. He was the very opposite of my boss. Dress code was always semi-formal, and he was always on someone about something that was wrong. Me, having been there the longest, I was highest on the weird office hate thing. It got to the point where I got them trying to snoop on my computer a few times, which is also integral to the story. My boss just said to start locking my office when I leave, so that's what I do now. The other manager had a rule where if the receptionists are out, one of the staff accountants needs to cover front desk. My boss had no issue with that as it was our rule as well. Luck would have it, both of our receptionists had called out one day. The other manager asked me to cover downstairs for the day. I told him no because I'm working on payroll all day and that's sensitive information. I didn't say it was our payroll, but our payroll was on my to-do list. He said he didn't care and told me to get downstairs. I called my boss and he had asked me to just please cover and then he would talk to the other manager. The other manager had a big old smirk on his face. I reluctantly went downstairs in an annoyed, sour mood, but then a brilliant idea popped up. I'll work on our payroll downstairs. So I started working on our payroll and got all the stubs processed and ready for direct deposit. After that, I start working on the payroll taxes, thank Social Security and Medicare. Part of working on payroll taxes is having a summary of the payroll you just ran. Conveniently, I needed to go to the bathroom, so I minimized all the windows on the receptionist's computer, and I called upstairs to see if someone could cover while I go. As good fortune had it, one of the snoopers was the one who came downstairs. So I go to the bathroom, and I take a little longer than normal, because why not? To add additional context, I make considerably more than all the managing CPA's employees, including his fresh CPA's. I get back to my desk and he leaves. All my windows aren't minimized anymore. The payroll summary is the first window on screen. The payroll summary shows everything, and I mean everything. The snooper immediately told everyone, including the other manager. Now all my coworkers already had an idea of what I made. However, the other employees were livid. None of the other employees wanted to work unless they made what I made. The other manager was seconds from blowing a gasket but he knew there was nothing he could do to me. I asked my boss to show him the cameras pointed at the reception desk so he could see exactly what happened. It was all there on my camera that he was going through my work. Needless to say, I don't cover the front desk anymore and his employees' morale dropped hard. I do feel bad for them though, even if they are jerks to me. A decent bunch of them left and maybe about half of them had replacements, so we're down about four people. My boss wasn't particularly happy about the situation as a whole, but he said, we'll get through it. Damn, I figured you were just going to delay payroll by a day or something to piss everyone off. This is going nuclear on an office. Management hates when people compare salaries. And our last story. Son's birdhouse got me a fine.
My son had turned four and wanted to build a birdhouse. I'm thrilled anytime he wants to make something and not sit glued to the TV or iPad, so we went out to get one of those birdhouse kits with the pre-cut pieces. He loves being independent, so aside from starting the nails and helping him figure out which piece goes where, I let him do his thing. He even painted it after, calling it the Rainbow House, so you can guess what it looked like. This thing was barely staying together, but it was his and he was proud of it. We put it on our table in the back deck, and when I got home from work the next day, I had a letter from the HOA shoved in my door. It was a $50 fine for having an animal sanctuary on our property. I went down to the property management office to argue the fine and was told they would take me to court if I didn't pay. I decided not to save money and fight them in court. The fine was canceled, but the birdhouse had to be removed. The worst part of this whole ordeal was explaining to my son why he couldn't show off his birdhouse. I told him what the HOA said, and he told me when we move next time, we should make sure there aren't any HOAs around. They're a pain about a bunch of things like white glove checking my light fixtures for dirt, measuring my bush in the front of the house to make sure no part of it's more than 36 inches tall. They even came and checked my mulch color against their color swatches 15 minutes after I pulled into my driveway and unloaded the first bag. Recently, I had a situation where they tried to charge me $90 in late fees for $2 in unpaid dues that they previously told me I had paid. The dues amount had changed and my automatic payments didn't get updated in time. Luckily, I had all the emails where they said I was all paid up. They don't have any way to check your balance. After I sent them the emails, they backed down and removed the late fees. Your son's suggestion about avoiding HOAs in the future speaks to a sentiment shared by many who prefer a more relaxed approach to home ownership. The incident with the late fees further emphasizes the importance of keeping meticulous records and advocating for oneself when faced with arbitrary charges. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.